Let's create a custom advanced block in NeoForge. 121 Minecraft modding course is available down below with over 11 hours of content covering everything from the basics all the way to block entities and custom mobs. All right, we found this back in trailer once more. And in this tutorial, we're going to be adding a custom advanced block to our project right here. So similarly to the advanced item that we've seen last time, now it's going to be an advanced block. Now this, of course, will require a custom block class in this case. So in our block package, we're going to right click new package called custom. And then inside of there, we'll make a new Java class and we're going to call this the magic block in this case, simply because I didn't come up with anything more creative than that. And a custom block class, once again, ends with the block suffix over here in this case. And then whatever the block basically is, in this case, magic block, well, it's just a magic block. And there you go. So this will extend the block class, making sure we choose the one from net Minecraft world level block. And we can hit the tab key to auto complete this. We can then hover over this create constructor matching super. And once again, in theory, the block class is done. But of course, it wants some cool functionality. For this, first of all, we start typing an override inside of the magic block class. And you can see every single freaking method that you can override over here. And there are tons of them, right? It's actually pretty freaking insane how many there are. And I can also once again suggest clicking on the block over here, control left click on it will open the class itself, which you can then go through. Some of the methods even have some amount of Java docs over here. What you can also do is click on block and then control H to see all of the different blocks that exist. So those are all of the different block classes that exist in vanilla. So if you want to look at any of them now, how any of them work, you can literally just go in there and actually take a look. So let's just say, let's take something that's not too crazy, but is interesting. I actually do always like the magma block for this because it is, well, it's, it's not that complicated. And you can basically see that the magma block over here has the step on method, which is obviously the method, right? When you step on a magma block, well, it hurts you. And that is going to be, as you can see, one of the reasons that it works is because of this method that is overwritten. And you can also see there's some other things with a bubble column that exist over here as well. Highly recommended to take a look at those. That is probably one of, if not the best place and resource that you have to take a look at some of the methods and uh, you know, basic functionality that you can overwrite. Now, in our case, we're going to overwrite the use without item method. This is going to be the method that gets called when you right click this particular block without having an item. I mean, it's it's literally in the name, right? It is use without item. So there you go. One thing we want to do is we want to immediately return an interaction result of success. This is going to give the right clicking a little bit of a swing animation that you've probably seen numerous times already when you're you know playing Minecraft and you're right clicking something and that basically is going to do that. Right then on right click I literally only want the level to play a sound. So we're gonna say level dot play sound. I'm gonna pass in the player. I'm gonna pass in the position. I'm gonna pass in sound events dot let's do a amethyst cluster place over here right or amethyst block place uh let's do a cluster place why not let's do a cluster place that's gonna be fine cluster place over here then we'll do sound source of blocks and a volume and a pitch of one each this is simply going to play a sound right so when we right click this particular block a sound is going to play so that's pretty cool already However, I want another thing and that for that we're going to actually override the step on method and this one is going to be pretty freaking cool. So what I want to do is or what I want to be able to do is I want to throw an item onto a, this magic block over here and then it's going to turn into a diamond, right? That's literally all I want to do. Now, it sounds pretty interesting, but it definitely is possible even with a step on method. And let's just take a look. So first of all, we have this entity right here in as a parameter. Then this is obviously going to be the entity that has stepped on this particular block. So the first thing we need to see is if this entity is an instance of an item entity, right? So an item entity, there you go. And if it is, then we'll immediately cast it to an item entity as well. Now, if that is the case, then we have to check whether or not it's even an item that we want to change, right? So if the item entity even contains an item that we want wish to change. So for this, we get the item entity, we get the item. So this is going to be the item stack. From that, we get the item over here. So the get item, get item might be a bit of a bad naming convention over here for the get item method, the first one, because, you know, that this gets you the item stack and then this gets you the item. And then we can actually compare this. So let's say, for example, mod items dot raw bismuth dot get here in this case. 
And if it is raw bismuth, well, then we can change the item. So we're going to change it by doing item entity that set item. And here we're going to set, make a new item stack of items dot diamond and then item entity dot get item dot get count because obviously we want to change like all of the raw bismuth like that is in one stack basically on the ground all of them turn to diamonds do note that this example right here is simple in the sense that if you want anything more complicated right so if you're like oh i want like three different items on there and they do some cool stuff that is probably not going to work just with like the step on method You'll probably have to make a completely like a custom block entity for that. And that's a little bit more complicated. We'll take a look at that in a way future tutorial. So that's going to be a while until we get there. But the general idea is that anything more complicated is probably not going to work in this case. But it is still pretty cool to illustrate this. Please also note if the item that you want to be able to change, right? If this is an item from vanilla, obviously then you do not use the get call over here because an item, right, like in, in here, that is literally just an item, as you can see, while our raw bismuth, right, that's a deferred item. So we always, for our custom items, always have to use the dot .get. And yes, by the way, you could, in theory, also add multiple ones, right? So we can add another if statement here and then say, for example, well, how about we are also going to turn items dot, uh, sure, dandelions, why not? And we're going to turn dandelions into a rose bush, a wither rose, why not? I feel like that's pretty good. That's a good idea. So we're turning a dandelion into a wither rose as well. And that, of course, also is going to work. And you can add as many as you like. And there you go. Now with this done, we can go into our mod blocks class and actually register the block. For this, we're going to make a public static final deferred block, in this case of type block. Again, this is going to be our magic underscore block equal to the register block method with the name, not block, but magic underscore block. There you go. And then a supplier of a new, very importantly, magic block, right? So we obviously have to create a new magic block instance in this case. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Within here, we have some block behavior properties. So block behavior dot properties dot of. And we're going to do give it a strength of, let's say, two. And then also requires correct tool for drop. And that should pretty much be everything we need in this case. Let's add it to the creative mode tab. It's going to be the magic block here. There we go. I think that that's going to be fine. And then when it comes to anything else, well, it is all in the JSON files. So let's first of all do the translation. Obviously, nothing too crazy when it comes to the translation. And then the JSON files. Well, that is once again simply dragging the JSON file, a uh, JSON file that already exists, right, for the block states JSON file, just dragging that into the same folder while holding control and then just changing the name as well as the content here. And then doing the same thing here for the item model JSON file. Do note that you want to move a item model JSON file from a block, right? And actually copy that. If you were to use the bismuth right here, that would not be what you would want. And then, of course, a block texture, which will also be available to you down below for downloads. We'll just drag that over here while holding control. And that's going to add it. And there we go. So that is going to be everything we need in this case. So once again, when it comes to anything, you know, different in terms of the functionality that you'd like to do, that is, of course, up to you as well. But if you want some different things to happen in the youth without item method, right, like some right clicking functionality, just play around with this a little bit, be open to experimentation, and then you should be good to go. But with this done, let's jump into the game and see if it works. All right, fans, us back in Minecraft. As you can see, the magic block has been added to the game. And if I set it down and I right click, there we go. I actually have to, let's just like turn down up the volume a little bit. That is pretty freaking cool though. That is already going to work. So the right clicking functionality absolutely works. And now we had the dandelion and we also had the raw bismuth over here. So let's get some of that. And let's just for the sake of argument, also get just a bit of a stone over here just to see that it's not going to work with everything. So if I throw a stone on there and see nothing happens, however, a dandelion. Oh, well, that turns into a freaking wither rose and the raw bismuth that turns into diamonds. So diamonds galore. If I uh, were to able to actually throw the entire stack, let's just take a look at the over here. So if you throw the entire stack, of course, the entire stack turns into diamonds. That is absolutely freaking amazing. And that is an awesome example of a custom advanced block 
added to Minecraft. As always, of course, all of the code is available down below. But that's going to be it for this tutorial right here. Next time in this video, we'll talk about custom food and fuel. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.